Yeah, we could do that. Well, there's some sort of Viking counter. I can't really read what the heck... I mean, something's going on here, but... I guess it's actually... Okay, whatever. Sounds fine to me. Alright. Okay, keep an eye on the electric charge. We only have 210. Keep going past Elu. Uh, nothing much. You can go quite a ways. Numbers start getting a little bit iffy if you go far enough. There's a lot of bad rounding that happens, basically. Sort of like, like old versions of Minecraft, like uh, Far Lands or Bust with Kurt J. Mack was, there, there was a, uh, he sort of shows the floating point errors that occur in that version of Minecraft, beta something something something, you get too far out. But that doesn't work quite the same in Kerbal Space Program, but it's similar. Not quite the same because the physics stuff is still centered on your vessel. It's just that some of the numbers get wacky. Now, of course, there are, there are mods that add planets past Elu, the outer planets mods, planets outer planets mod. Well, that's a different mod, yeah. But for Alpha Centauri and all those stars, the numbers. The, the, it can't even draw the trajectory lines um, along the way. So there's a lot of weird business going on on, on any of the interstellar stuff. Well, it looks like this will be out into solar space or whatever you want to call it. I guess we'll leave it inclined for now. No particular reason not to. Maybe a little bit higher up would be good. There's no particular requirement in the contract. We just need to put it around Ike. Uh, what is it? Why is it changing things? No, I guess it's just that's weird. So basically, uh, without capturing into orbit, we would fly out, come back around, and hit Ike again here, and it's getting all confused. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I'm so confused. When? <laughs> One day. Okay, so that's in one... Okay, we we have to go all around... Okay, I see. Jeez. And I'm confused by all these trajectories. It's sort of stabilized. It's made up. Uh, we gotta watch out for the lines of communication. It seems like we can communicate through, like, some of those. Or not. I don't know. I can't tell. So, why don't we start capturing a little bit ahead right before we lose communication? I'm fine with that. Let's see. Yeah. Alright, but. We got the contract fulfilled. All right, now we can go to the tracking station. Uh, well, comms would have had to have been deployed, otherwise we wouldn't have even got here. So, anyway, um, let's go to the tracking station. All right, so... We have to wait until Duna's in the return posture. 
Uh, that's about 75 degrees, I think. Okay. I guess it's Mildorf's pot. No, that doesn't make any sense. That's the scrap one. We'll get that but one back first. By which I mean have it start its transfer first. Okay, there's a Kerbin encounter. And it's within our budget, barely, but still. Well, that should be fine. We will do this return burn. Hopefully that's centered enough on this. It can release, yeah, yeah, they, they can release, sure. Very important functionality. But yeah, I'm just worried that the heat shield doesn't really cover this very well. Guess we're gonna find out the hard way. Okay, three, two, one, on. This one we want to do as accurately as possible. Well, a bit of a mid-course adjustment. We've got 84 meters per second, though we have some mod propellants as well. Well, uh, we'll eventually get it so that it dips properly in the atmosphere. This is fine. 24 meters per second will do. That's a good node. All right, so this is on its way. Let's get the... No, no. Let's get the other mission. We have rescued three Kerbals around Duna. Well, I say we've rescued them. We, we got them into the pod. Rescuing them actually takes getting them back home. All right, that would be pretty good. 18.9 meters per second is fine. Still catching sunlight. All right. They're all guys. That's one downside. Uh, pilot, engineer, and scientist. They all look the same. Tracking station. All right. So one's in 154, one's in 156. All right. That's good enough at the start. Cheat wheels! Yes. Aren't they glorious? Alright, we got a dummy maneuver there. Back to tracking station. Uh, well that's crashing. We'll fix that when we get there. Okay, tracking station. Well, I guess we can just verify its orientation first. All right, now tracking station. So who's first? Looks like the rescue vehicles first. That's probably too low. Uh, let me just tune this down. Let's just go for the usual 26 kilometers. All right, where's Kerbin? Probably in the midst of the sun somewhere, or... Oh, there it is. The state of the save is still just one death. <laughs> I guess that's the important thing, and... We haven't gotten to Drez. We haven't gotten past Duna. Mostly Duna stuff. Okay, minimum pressure. I should increase that. I mean, I guess I'll probably deploy them manually, but...
large transmitter array. No, we haven't got the dishes yet. They seem to only unlock later in the tech tree. Nope, I don't see any reason not to release. For Skylab, just use the one that gives 1033 kilonewtons, I think. I mean, that's the one they were using for most of Apollo. I don't know, they, I don't think they operated it more than that, so... The rest is all hypothetical. Well, we tried to send a probe to Drez, but it couldn't communicate back. They didn't have enough range, and we had our best antenna on it. Uh, it looks pretty watery to me. I think we're we're safely splashing down this time. I don't know what the land to water percentage on Kerbin is. Seems like it's got a lot more land than Earth does. Okay, parachutes. No estimates, please. We want the real numbers. Stop, est stop estimating. Anybody can estimate. Come on. Asking for the real numbers. Well, it's uh, 10 meters per second, so... We could try and jettison the heat shield, but... But it could come and smack us in the rear end, so I'll just keep it. Just keep it. Maybe we should jettison it. What do you think? Eh, it's probably too low now. Alright. We got these guys back. Now we need that, uh... The little capsule we clawed. More Kerbals that we technically don't have room for. 30 science as well. Didn't even look for science this time. See? We technically have a max of 12, but we've got 17 active Kerbals because we keep rescuing them. And if we actually wanted to hire a Kerbal, it cost us half a million funds! Okay, but we need to get that pot, that um, lantern cam back. Because for some reason. I mean, don't they find these lantern cans by the side of the road or something? That cost to hire them is way too high. Now, if they want to implement a system where, you know, they charge us, like, a yearly amount for having a certain number of Kerbals, like their salary or something, you know... It's complicated, but I wouldn't say that that was horrible. The current price to hire them is absolutely horrible. <laughs> yeah, the price to hire has been going up. Yeah. Start with a cheer. That's not how it works. <laughs> it's not like somebody visits Kennedy Space Center to look at the alligators and they decide to like, make them into a pilot. No, that's not how that works. I just wanted to look at the wildlife. <laughs> I mean, it's a wildlife sanctuary. I didn't want to go to Mars. <laughs> Why does that cost more? Inflation? <laughs> They're more specialized because you're sending out uh, further away. They have more expectation for staying away from home for longer times, I guess. I don't know. At first, you're only doing like 15 minute flights or something. Equal. Alright. You told them your mom wouldn't let you. Why did you do that? It could have been your big chance. 
It occurs to me that we're probably going to lose communication immediately after we let go. So in this case, we have to really arm our parachutes and everything. So I'm just gonna say deploy shoot. It may cause us problems, but I'm just gonna decouple straight retrograde. It may come back and smack us, I don't know. I'm also going to have RCS on so that it can hold retrograde. Surface retrograde. Will it actually protect this? Will the parachutes work? So many questions. It was so popular they brought it back. <laughs> Good times. It's tilting a bit. It's using up all the mob propellant too. We have lost communication. Came from Duna, yeah. Set up stream, I don't know. It's very nice that the claw holds on to things during re-entry. That's a very that's very high technology, I feel. Very important. Whoa right. Let's just hope it doesn't smack the can into the ground too hard. Three kerbals from the moon? Well, you know. Three kerbals from the moon and three kerbals from orbit of Duna is not that different. Genesec was two gigabytes? Reiki. Alright. Recover vessel. Download is 1.8 gig. Jeez. That's like my budget for... I mean, that's like the size of Kerbal Space Program itself. <laughs> I mean, uh, actually... Yeah, I don't know. Seems pretty hefty. I mean... RO isn't that big. Alright, so we got all the things done, right? Yep. That uh, is checkmarked. And now we're down to... Mere three contracts, one of which is the Sentinel thing. Okay. I think that's pretty good for today.